So now we've got the idea about uh, current and charge, the second of the key ideas that we need to know to understand electric circuits is potential difference. So we're going to have a look and to describe what potential difference means. We're going to define potential difference. And then really the crucial thing about all this is that as we build up our model, we need to be able to link the things together. So we're going to look at some questions that involve going back over current and adding potential difference into that as a concept. So we're on our second basic definition, potential. You'll have come across the idea of potential energy at GCSE. Right, potential just means energy per unit something. So gravitational potential is to do with energy per unit mass. Gra um, electrical potential is to do with energy per unit charge. Notice that you'll come to an 82, the important difference between potential and potential energy. If it's per unit um, charge or mass, then we just call this the potential. So potential difference right, is simply the difference in the energy per unit charge between two points. So um, although sometimes we talk about the potential at one point, we can't really measure that. What we can measure is the potential difference between two points. If you compare this with gravity, you'll have thought of these sort of examples where what you've got is, you know, you drop something from three metres high to the floor, say, for example. Well, you're saying the potential is it's three metres high, but of course it, that's compared with the floor. If you dug a hole in the floor, it would keep going faster as it fell. So we're always looking for the difference between two points, in this case, two points in a circuit. So the definition, hopefully you're getting the idea now, we're talking about energy per unit charge. So the definition is that one volt, so volts are the units of potential difference. We quite often will be a bit lazy and call that voltage, okay? but really we should call it potential difference. So one volt means there's a difference of one joule of energy per coulomb of charge. Okay, so this is an important definition of what a potential difference means. One volt means one joule of energy per coulomb of charge. So above all with this, what we really need to have is a clear model in our minds as we're looking at circuits to actually be thinking about what's going on. And I really like this little animation, which hopefully shows you what's going on in a circuit. Um, it's showing you here, uh, these little kind of meters of the electrons going around the circuit and the little line on them is to do with um, the amount of energy they've got in a kind of fuel tank way so that over here the petrol gauge is kind of pointing over here somewhere which is empty but by the time they come out over here then the petrol gauge is over here which means that the tank is full so hopefully straight away you get the idea here that the battery is taking these electrons with no energy and giving them lots of energy so they've got their kind of maximum energy in the circuit here Okay, as they go around here, nothing happens to them. Look at the gauge, it's pointing in the same direction until they go through the light bulb. And in the light bulb, this light bulb, these are two um, identical light bulbs, so they actually lose half the energy in the first light bulb and half the energy in the second light bulb. Okay, but uh, as hopefully you'll remember from GCSE, if the light bulbs were different, it might be that they lose more than half the energy here. If we want to measure potential difference, we need to connect a voltmeter in the circuit and you can't just connect a voltmeter at one point you have to measure the difference between two points so for example oops forgive my circle there if we connected a voltmeter from here to here right then we'd see the difference so we might call this a zero and this let's say it's a six volt battery this would be six so we'd have a potential difference here of six volts a really, really important thing to remember is that in the in the battery, the electrons are gaining the energy. Okay, so this is going in here with zero and coming out here with six. Okay, if we connect the light bulb, again, we might say the potential here is the same. So this is still six here. If we measure there and we measure over, oops, and we measure over here, then this is only half full, so let's say that's three. So we've got here the difference between six and three, so this one says three volts. But remember, this is a drop of three volts, whereas this is a gain of three volts. Okay, we'll come back to a different term here called EMF, which is to do with actually giving the electrons energy. Over here, they haven't lost any in the wires. These are nice perfect wires which don't have any resistance. So they've still got three. By the time they come out of here, 
they've got no energy left so if we measure the difference between there and there this one will also say 3 volts okay because the difference in the potential is once again 3 okay so if you can get that sort of image in your mind right it will be a lot easier for you if you the sort of person who ends up just thinking about those sort of boxes connected to things with numbers on them without actually thinking about what's going on in the circuit you will find it much more difficult to understand when the circuits get more complicated so have a good look at that have a think about it always be imagining these little electrons going round carrying the energy but of course remember this isn't six joules per electron this is six joules for a whole coulomb of charge so maybe each one of these might represent those six million 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 electrons that make up one coulomb of charge okay so as ever in physics if we can we'd like an equation to uh, work all the maths out for us here's our new equation the potential difference or voltage here is the energy we've got a w for energy here because this is like the work done by the charges or on the charges divided by the charge q okay so w for work when you see that and you're thinking why isn't that an e they're using the symbol w okay if it's a voltage then it's the uh, sorry if it's a potential difference it's an energy lost by the charges so it's the work done by the charges if it's an emf if it's been provided by a cell then this W is the work done on the charges, giving them more energy. Okay, our standard uh, SI units for this. Uh, v is the potential difference, measured in volts, symbol V. W, as I said, is the energy, so that's measured in joules. And as we know, Q is the charge, measured in coulombs. Okay, so here's a battery, not a can battery, but a car battery, that should say. It's rated at 12 volts. What does this mean? Okay, hopefully you've got the idea that it means that every coulomb of charge that passes through the battery will gain 12 joules of electrical potential energy. So if we go back to the um, car battery from lesson 1, 12 volts, if that's a 12 volt battery, and we worked out in that question that 1, 000, uh, sorry, 129,600 coulombs of charge could pass through it, so the energy stored in that car battery okay, will just be Here's our equation that's on the data sheet, V equals W over Q. So we rearrange that to get W, the energy is V times Q. So W is V is 12. Here's our charge. Just multiply those two numbers together, we get 1.45 times 10 to the 6 joules. Okay, so if you remember from last lesson, I think this was a 36 amp hour battery. We could call it a 1.4 megajoule battery. Okay, we've got a phone charger which uses a potential difference of 9 volt and a, a current of 50 milliamps to charge a phone battery for four hours. This word charge always causes us a bit of stress because people get the idea it's storing the charge, but of course it's not storing charge, it's storing the energy. The charges are already there in the wire. We just have to make them move round. Okay, but the total charge that flowed through the battery, um, so we've got back to our um, equation from lesson one, Q the charge is current times time. So we've got 50 times 10 to the minus 3, 50 milliamps to be careful with the units, 4 hours, 40 times 60 times 60. Don't forget to multiply by 60 twice. We're going to minutes then into hours. Put that in your calculator. Hopefully you get 720 coulombs of charge. So how much energy has the battery got? Well, it's got 720 coulombs of charge, which got 9 volts each. So uh, that is... The energy stored is V times Q, 9 joules per coulomb times 720 coulombs. The battery stored 6,480 joules of energy. Okay, and question four, it should say. So one half volt cell stores 600 joules of energy. How long can it provide a current of 20 milliamps for? Just a little bit more tricky here to think about the equations. So we've got a total, uh, the total charge it can provide, 1.5 joules of energy, because that's what this means. Every coulomb of charge goes um, out with 1.5 joules. We've got 600 joules, so V equals W over Q, Q equals W over V. Um, so we've got 600 joules coming out, 1.5 joules for every coulomb, so we can get 400 coulombs of charge out of that battery or through that battery I should say being kind of refueled okay if you think back to our petrol um, sort of tank analogy this is like having 600 litres of petrol in your petrol station each car needs to leave with one and a half litres 
Okay, so we can refuel 400 cars. How long will 400 coulombs take to flow through the cell if we've got 20 milliamps? We use Q equals IT. So we rearrange that, we get T equals Q over I. So Q is a charge, 400 coulombs. And we've come in out at 20 milliamps, so we've got 20 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. So that will run for uh, 2 times 10 to the 4, that's 20,000 seconds.